Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Good news is, you don't need one of these. This is a light meter, and it's a Siconic, and you can buy that as a separate thing there to measure ambient light. It won't measure flashlight, but ambient light, it for sure measures. And the way it works is that you simply push down this button, and then you can see if I hide the light from the, the bulb sitting up here, you can see it goes all to the bottom, and if I remove my hand so it gets some light, you can see the needle moves upward. So this measures how ma much ambient light there is. And good news is that your camera, such a thing built into it, and uh, you can't see it, but I can assure you it's here. Here I have the Nikon 700. And let me, for starters, just take you through the three metering modes, because you can influence how the camera meters, uh, so it does it a little bit differently, subject to how you configure it or what you select here. So there are three modes. This is a Nikon D700, but it's it's applicable for all types of cameras. They more or less have the same three metering modes. So I got three images for you, one shot with each metering mode, and we start out with the spot metering, where I put the spot here on the right-hand side of the cup. And as you can see, if you look at the histogram, clearly it uh, tilts to the right, meaning that it's a very bright image. And that's, of course, because the camera has now prioritized the cup and uh, completely ignored the fact that there's a lot of light to the left in the scene. If we go to the next image, you will see this is where it has taken into account all the image, the entire frame, and it has weighted in the especially the top left part, which is very bright. And you will see now the histogram is much more balanced. But of course, also the cup appears a little bit dark relative to the first one you saw. Overall, it has tried to balance the entire scene here. You will also notice if you saw the metrics here that it has increased the shutter speed and it has reduced the aperture. So it's in two dimensions is letting in less light. The final image is, this, is the center weighted metering where it takes the entire seen into account, but prioritizes the center. And here you see it's very sim similar to the spot metering because the spot was in the center. So it's not a big surprise, but you will see it is slightly different. If you go back and forth between these two, slightly different. And this is probably the mode you would use for, for shooting a model, maybe outside where there's bright sun, but you want the, the model's face to be correctly exposed. So these are the three different metering modes here on the Nikon D700, but I think it's pretty universal that you have metering modes like these on, if not all cameras, most cameras. Okay, so for all three images, the camera went through exactly the same process here in fully automated mode. First, it meters the scene. Secondly, it set parameters to match the metering. And thirdly, it executed, meaning that it opened the shutter, did the exposure, and basically took the picture. Good news is that your camera has logic to translate the meter reading into settings for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I will not go into details here on how it's done. It becomes very technical very quickly, but just know that there is this relationship. You can look it up in tables, or you can also develop a little formula. There are many options here, but I will not cover that in this video. ISO is not ex part of the exposure triangle. It's actually only aperture and shutter speed that determines how exposed to light your sensor is. The ISO is a camera internal post-processing thing that happens. It's a gain that is applied and therefore technically it's not part of the exposure, but you can think of it as such, I think, because ISO can help you get your image correctly exposed or appear to be correctly exposed. Uh, so I think it's fair to think of it as part of the exposure triangle, but just know that if you come across someone who says it's not, it's actually there is some truth to this. But for practical purposes, I think you can include it in your work with exposure. Several combinations of shutter speed and aperture gives it exactly the same exposure. And uh, this, of course, leads to the question of how does your camera then choose which value to go for? And the answer is, I technically, I don't know, but I have the impression from working with many different cameras that they choose a value that are not too extreme. You probably heard of the abbreviation PASM, and it is four modes your camera has that gives you varying degrees of control as to how your picture is exposed. These four modes give you varying degrees of control in program mode, the camera decides both shutter and aperture, whereas in manual mode, you decide both of these. In aperture priority, you decide the aperture and the camera sets the shutter speed. And in shutter priority, it's the other way around. Aperture and shutter priority are also known as the semi-automatic modes. And your camera will, in the first three modes here, do all it can to set the values so you get a correctly exposed image. Not so in the more intimidating manual mode, where you are more on your own. So armed with these modes, you can shoot, for example, with a very shallow depth of field in aperture priority mode, to make your subject stand out or in shorter priority you can freeze action or the opposite let some motion blur 
illustrate action and speed. In all of these modes, you can further click on and off auto ISO, so you give the camera an additional dimension to use in order to get a correct exposed picture. Even in manual mode, you can switch on auto ISOs, but be aware that when this is the only parameter it can regulate, your ISO may go ballistic as a consequence. Finally, some more good news. Even though you in manual mode have told the camera to stay clear of setting the aperture and our shutter speed, it still measures the light. And even better, it tells you if your exposure is spot on or not. When you put the camera in manual mode with no auto ISO, a little indicator appears. And if the bars are to the plus side, you are overexposing and to the minus side, the opposite. So make sure the indicator is at the middle, then you have a well exposed image. Of course, you as an artistic choice can deviate from what the indicator tells you to do, for instance, your own version of exposure compensation. But even so, the indicator is a good help in getting the image exposed just as you want, also in manual mode. Okay, that's it from me. I hope this video was useful. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.